catering for this episode of the Fat Ugly Toad provided by Dick's, where taste has been the difference since 1954. Go and eat a big bag of dicks. Hello, welcome to the Fat Ugly Toad on YouTube. Today I will be unboxing and reviewing a portable gaming device I purchased recently on eBay for $6.99 with free shipping plus 71 cents tax for a total of $7.70. The background music for this video will be provided by the device itself. I think bad video game music is part of the charm of cheap game devices. The eBay listing was called YLW Handheld Retro Video Game Console 8-Bit with 198 Classic Games GC36. For $7.70 I figured what the heck. Some of these cheap consoles are great. How bad could it be? Golly, they sure did wrap this well. Gosh, it sure is a nice box I won't be keeping. It looks like the target market is retro gamers instead of children or licensed merchandise lovers. That certainly is brave of them. Throughout this video, you may notice a speck of dust that, unbeknownst to me, was on my camera lens. It should drive you crazy for the rest of the video. If you didn't even notice, glad I could help. I ordered the brown one. Perhaps they consider it gold, but it looks brown to me. My first brown one. It's smaller than my mind envisioned. Three AAA battery compartment. User manual. Screen protector. And under the screen protector? What's this? Another screen protector. If they had put the second one on correctly, I probably would have left it on, or not even noticed, but this has to go, and I'm not spending the energy reapplying it, but I suppose I should be grateful that it came with that option. Did the screen get smashed? No, it's just a reflection. I have a cool scar from a hobby knife like this. Kids don't try this at home. Also go away. Go watch YouTube Kids. The plastic housing is impressive. It's thick and solid. High quality and durable. Not a fragile housing. It looks cool too, in my opinion. Power switch on the top. That's it. No outs of any kind. Whether or not it can be modded is not a subject for today. Six tiny Phillips screws lock it together. The inspection sticker states 2018, so this has been in a warehouse for a little while. No Phillips screw resides inside the battery compartment. I wasn't expecting such high quality at this price. Definitely a red flag. This thing is nice. The blue buttons was a design choice. Black buttons? No. Brown buttons? No. How about blue? Someone somewhere said that out loud. Let's power it on. Beautiful backlit screen. Something we expect now, yet it still amazes me. I'll wiggle it around so you can see the screen at different angles. Not the brightest, and it can't be adjusted, but I have no complaints. Here is the GC36 between my PMP-V on the left and my RS-8 on the right, both in white, hence the blue three ring binder background. I knew by looking at the eBay photos of the GC36 
that it would have a D-pad similar to the RS-8, which creaks and even makes popping sounds, but to its credit, it still functions. I am not a fan of the RS-8 D-pad, or the insanely thin plastic used... I am not a fan of the RS-8 D-pad, or the insanely thin plastic used for the housing. Although it has a smaller screen, the GC36 is without a doubt a better build. Perhaps the D-pad will be better as well? I didn't expect the GC36 to be as tiny as the PMP-V, and although not as thin, it's otherwise almost the same size. Here is the button diagram from the manual. Pause if you like. The buttons are new and might loosen up a bit, but feel a little stiff. The exceptions are reset, sound, and start slash pause. The D-pad is as I feared. The same noisy and poppy feel the circle D-pad of the RS-8 has. Pressing left is particularly noticeable. Otherwise I like them. They remind me of little Tic Tacs and mints. Now I think it's time for me to spend a few hours with the GC36. I will use my magic time manipulation powers and be right back. The GC36 has some problems I need to warn you about. First, pause here to look at the included manual. If, if you like. <clears throat> First, pause here if you'd like a look at the included manual. Pause here to read part one of the game list of the GC36's included 198 games. The game titles I have highlighted in red are unplayable. The D-pad simply won't cooperate, and I will demonstrate with a few examples of play footage. Most of the time the problem is that the sprite simply will not move left or some other necessary direction. Title number 33, Little Witch, works, but left and right are reversed. The titles in yellow are repeated games with different titles, and although many of the same type of clone exist, almost all of the clone games have different skins. For example, in one version of Defender 2 or Stargate, you play as a dragon instead of a spaceship. But in a way, the GC36 does have almost 198 games. Unfortunately, the software and the hardware don't often communicate. The games remaining white work fine, as do the games highlighted in green. The games in green are games I am interested in returning to play again. The list is for my own use as well. So far, I've only spent a few moments on each game. Pause here to read part two of the included game list. Again, the games in red are unplayable. As unacceptable as this is, a second problem exists with the GC36 that I shall also let you in on. The D-pad doesn't even work properly with the menu itself, specifically pressing down. The best way to select the game you want is to press right until you pass it and then scroll up. Down does sometimes work, but this is unacceptable. Yellow are repeated games with different titles. Games remaining in white work fine. Games in green work fine and interest me enough to try again. Here we go with the first game on the list, highlighted in uh, Here we go with the first game on the list, highlighted in red on said list. If you watch the sprite I am playing, you can clearly tell that sometimes it obeys the D-pad and other times it simply doesn't. Imagine Pac-Man with a broken joystick that occasionally works when you slam it around. One more example of this before moving on. Game number seven, Abscondi. Am I saying that correctly?
down, 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 down. Down, 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 pressing down, down, down. This looks like a fun and challenging game I might otherwise enjoy. The graphics are perfect for a screen this small. No tiny pixels shooting at me. But it simply doesn't work. Let's see what the GC36 does well. Not that it should matter to you. Game number 11, Error Alert. Next, a completely different game. Game number 13, Airway. completely different experience. Let's try a completely different game. Game number 14, Argus. Completely different experience. So no, the games don't exactly repeat, and I like reskinned games personally, but 198 games in one is a bit more of an opinion than a statement. I do like it better than an endlessly repeating list. Sound options include unobtrusive, should be sleeping, only a cat could hear it, and silent. My unit has two speaker grills. Fancy. Time to return to some games I enjoyed. Number 24, Night Arrow. Yep, Galaxian Reskin. It plays this one perfectly. Despite it all, if you end up with one, it's pretty great. But no, don't buy one.
I'm a fox for some reason. Another reskin. This is a creative reskin of Joust. If the menu on this device exists as a family clone multicart, I would love to play that multicart.
Well, kind of a bummer about the software and the hardware not communicating properly. I can't recommend this device at all. Don't purchase this one at any price. Say no to the GC36. They offer it in brown for a reason. It's a real shame. It could have been really good. Thanks for watching.